welcome to Driftwood Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera is Matt. As always, it is episode 16 of the 3,000 year old guitar build. As you remember in the last episode, we glued the braces down to the back. So today we get to do the exciting part of carving those braces, voicing of the back, and making it ready to glue onto the side. So that's where we stand on this thing. Um, we pulled it out of the go bar deck uh, this morning and uh, it looks good. It looks how we expect it to look. It's like a back with some braces on it. Um, this is way easier to do and less scientific the way that I do it than it was voicing the top of the guitar. There are going to be inevitably be people who comment and get into the comment section on this video who follow the, um, the Gillet Gore method and all these other people who really get caught up in different modes and uh, tuning of the, the free plates and all that stuff. It's not how I do my guitars. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure that you can make a really fantastic sounding guitar. I don't understand it. And uh, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Don't The things that we don't understand doesn't mean that they're wrong. <laughs> but uh, it's just... Uh, Yet another teachable moment for Chris Alvarado. Exactly. Guitars. <laughs> um, the way that I do my guitars is I really focus a lot of my energy, and pretty much most of my energy, on voicing the top of the guitar. Don't mind Charlie, he's back here making noise, <laughs> chewing on my son's uh, uh, car seat. It's fine, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna check on it. <laughs> Let me think. You say hi? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, so, rewinding. What, um, on the backs of my guitars, I, I do this ladder bracing technique, and I don't really spend a whole lot of time voicing them to a specific note. There are a lot of people who comment asking about, like, do you voice your back to be a certain frequency in correlation to the frequency that the top is? I do not do that. That's just not the method that I do. So if you are using the Gore Gillet method or one of the other methods that rely on a lot of like uh, math and frequencies and all that stuff, that's this is not gonna apply. It doesn't mean that it's not right. I get a really, really good sounding guitar using my method and so I just stick with it. That's the reason why. Um, I definitely try to always improve the sounds of my guitar but I'm not gonna completely fundamentally change how I do my guitars. So. Um, so what we need to do at this point is I'm going to actually take what are right now very square um, braces. They are. They're just straight off of the drum sander and in just they're rectangles at this point. So what we need to do is take these and we're going to actually take them from square into more of a uh, an oval shape. And then I'm actually going to scallop the ends of them so that they'll fit into the, the sides of the guitar. So that's what we're gonna do. Using the old trusty LMI vacuum clamp, we're gonna put this thing inside of here, turn it on and ah, it's very satisfying. Um, what I tend to do so that I don't mess up my back strap because if you're not careful using your hand planes and your chisels, what you can end up doing is accidentally gouging and messing up the back strap. So what I usually do is just take a little bit of painter's tape as a preparatory method here and I'll just put down a couple of protective pieces across here. It's annoying but time well spent in my opinion because I always inevitably slip and screw it up. So I always just chuck down some tape real quick. Um, I guess one thing that I could do is make another template out of some thinner acrylic, right? That'd be a good idea. Always. <laughs> Um, and and uh, use that as a protective shield. But my, my acrylic template that I use to line all this up is almost a quarter inch thick, so it, it wouldn't work well for this as a protective shield. Um, so I'll just lay down some of that. I tend to do two layers of tape because one is not quite enough to protect um, from screw ups here. All right, so we got the tape on here. The thing that I do first is I usually take a small hand plane. You can use like your standard, um, your standard bench uh, plane, and and do this. I find that this small little Bridge City uh, hand plane works really well. Or even using the finger planes that Ibex sells work really well for this. But what I do is I just come in here. I will start with. Let me move this just to roll up just a split second. I usually I like to do the braces that are sitting right on top of my vacuum clamp because this section is super solid. But I'll take this and I just come in here and I'll start knocking this down. Matt brought his dog over today and it's his first time 
with uh, Ernie, Matt's Greyhound, is in the house. So Charlie's in here whimpering because he wants to go visit Ernie. So that's what you might hear in the background. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I'm going to take the uh, my, my plane here, and I'm just going to start working on knocking these. See, look, I just hit it. I just knocked that, and because I had the tape on there, it protected it. So that's good. But we're just going to knock this down. There we go. A much more aggressive cut on here now. And we'll do the other side. I just hit it again. Tape saving the day. You could do this whole thing with just chisels if you wanted. With a little bit of... Uh, it's not going to be quite as nice and even with a chisel as it would with a hand plane though. So that's why I use the hand plane. All right, so we've got the initial started bringing those in like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another bevel like this, and then we'll add an even another bevel like this. So eventually what we're going to end up with is a really nice, um, let me show you on the paper here. This is the, this is the kind of the look that I'm going for. It's kind of like that, kind of like a bullet shape. That's what I want the side profile of my um, my braces to look like on here. So we're just doing a knock and then we're gonna knock it and then we're gonna knock it that way. Three different cuts. So I'm gonna hit this upper section with, instead of it being like that angle, I'm gonna reduce it to this much of an angle. And then we'll do it on this side. And now I need to get that super shallow angle so we're gonna take this and come way in here like this. I'm trying to not let this hand plane ride on the wood because it'll just put little scratch marks on it. I'll sand most of that out, but. Cool. That's pretty much what I want. That is not super smooth. It's very Jankosaurus. Um, but then I can take um, some sandpaper and smooth that out real quick. Let me show you what that looks like. Just using some 180 grit here. I'm just smoothing this whole thing out. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Getting it very nice and smooth. Almost there. Yes. So that's pretty much what I want to do on that. And we are going to do that across all of these braces. But before we go, and do it to all of the braces. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and finish this entire lower brace and we'll show you what that method looks like. And then we're just gonna rinse and repeat that all the way up the guitar. Um, something that I tend to do on my guitars and that I will mention when we get to it though is that this brace and these two braces are slightly lower than these two braces here. And the only reason why I do that is because I think I mentioned it when we glued them on is that these braces here are spanning a much larger length just as it would a large bridge. If you have a bridge going across a larger body of water, it needs to be beefier because it's a larger span. These braces, particularly these upper bout ones, are not going across nearly as long of a distance. So we can actually make them weaker because they're not carrying as much of a load. So uh, in order to make that back just a little bit more responsive, um, I do that. The next thing that I do after I have now shaped these into that kind of more bullet shape, um, I'm going to scallop the ends of them because this back very much like on the top of the guitar, how we um, we uh, made the X brace notch into the sides. I don't know if you, you guys remember when we did that. These um, ladder braces on the back, each one of these is gonna be cut and notched into the sides of the guitar. So what we need to do is scallop them and I take them down to about two and a half millimeters, two millimeters-ish um, at, at that point where they po pocket into the sides of the guitar. So we'll do that. Um, very similar to how I did the um, the X braces, I don't tend to measure. I just kind of use my hand. I go back to about my first knuckle uh, and I just I do it from there and we'll knock it in. 
using a sharp chisel. You want to be careful here. If you're not using a high quality cut piece of um, uh, piece of brace wood, you can have all kinds of weird cross grain going on and you'll get all kinds of tear out and chips and stuff like that. So just be careful with it. That read, Try to read the grain and make sure that you're not going to snap your braces in half. And then I tend to take my little Ibex thumb plane here and I'll smooth it out a little bit. And what I do, and I think I, I can't remember if I used, showed you guys this little trick. Um, there we go. This little trick when I was doing the X braces, but my binding is like two and a quarter millimeters thick. So I just use that as a reference line to get me to the correct thickness. And that's it. I just want that even. That's that's pretty much what I'm looking for. So that's that's good, right? And then I can flip this around and do the same thing to the other side if I want to. Like I said, I use my index finger back to about a knuckle. Oh. <laughs> I almost took my damn eye out. Sorry, that, that was a good one. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it, it hit the ceiling. <laughs> uh, you get a little bit more control with these uh, finger planes. So you can see it's getting all like gnarly over here. It's getting all chewed up. That's because at the very end, suddenly the grain on this is starting to run in the other direction. So those are the things you need to be paying attention to, especially for those who are kind of new at guitar building. If this is your first time, learning how to read grain is important. That's like a big chunk of what Matt's uh, education is, uh, is you just kind of got to like, it's, it becomes intuitive, but it just takes a while for it to become intuitive, right? I mean, like, yeah. you got to start second guessing yourself and uh, one day suddenly it just starts to click on you. But uh, so now I'm going to have to flip this over because of that grain orientation issue. So I'm going to flip it over. And so show them, Matt, let's get in here. You saw how when I was running my, my plane this way, we started getting all that, but watch if I come at it from this direction. Suddenly it goes away. So those are the things that you need to be aware of. I'll just check it with my, my binding. And that's good. So, you can see what we've got there. That looks really nice. We've got a scoop up and then a scoop down. And uh, you know, that's pretty much what we're gonna do across the whole board here. We're gonna take that and just move that all the way up. Um, I usually take my sandpaper and smooth these out too. Get them nice and good. Just to get rid of any sort of stress areas that might be there. If you're really concerned about your back, um, you can just go crazy with the masking tape. Just protect it all. Get it really nice and protected and you will be good to go. And I can actually at that point pull this tape off and call that finished. Um, so we're going to do the same thing and move our way up the fretboard or up the back of the guitar and just keep chipping away at it. And uh, if I have some stuff to say, I will say it. But um, this, as you can see, it's just a lot easier. There's not as much to consider because you don't have uh, you know 110 to, to 180 pounds of tension on the back of the guitar like you do on the top. It also is not the primary sound generating surface on the guitar. It does contribute to the tone. There are a couple people who have commented who adamantly disagree with me and say the back has nothing to do with the sound of the guitar, but you know, whatever. <laughs> a little I know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're just gonna keep keep chipping away at it, and uh, uh, I, uh, I hope that I hope that so far we're pretty self-explanatory on this. Okay, so what we've done is these lower three braces are finished, and what I'm gonna do, I just wanted to have us come back from what was hopefully good looking B-roll. 
and we are gonna. If Matt did his job. <laughs> Or sucker for some good B-roll. So like I had mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to take these two braces and drop them down. I don't get in here with my micrometer. It's kind of an intuitive thing, but I'm just going to knock the tops of these off and make them lower. Take that down. Same thing up here. Knock it down a little bit. And I call that good. And we're just taking it down, I'd probably say like a 10%, 15% lower than these braces because they just don't need to be nearly as strong. You gotta remember this back is actually uh, probably an inch and a half wider than the finished product is because uh, I have some overhang that we leave on there that we actually are gonna cut off um, once we close up the body. So I'm gonna just, I just wanted to show you guys me doing that. You don't have to do it, uh, but to me it just intuitively makes sense. I'm sure that our armchair engineers will tell me otherwise. Um, but uh, that's not to say that they're wrong. It just uh, that's just not how my brain's working on this whole situation. <laughs> and we, <laughs> I, I'm an engineer. Like I have a degree as an engineer, and I have the, the, like, will happily tell you you're wrong too. Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong? I, I don't know. No. Uh, okay. It seems right to me. <laughs> so we're gonna take these ones down and knock them down. So these ones, because they're smaller, though, they end up less bullet shaped, and they end up just being kind of more, uh, kind of a half circle, kind of a look to them. But you can see this is going really, really quickly. Um, I have had a couple of these that I've had some more of those issues with um, grain directions changing at the last second. So if, if you're kind of new with this, you're better off using a um, little thumb plane uh, than you are with a chisel just because it's gonna be less likely to slip. The other thing I'm thinking of this now is that the chisel is less likely to fall off and gouge your back, whereas a chisel takes a little bit more practice to not fall off and inevitably tear your back up that you probably paid good money for. So be careful with that. Um, something I do want to mention while we're in the middle of doing this, if this is your first video that you've watched in a while for us, if you're just following the 3000 year old video, me and Matt are doing our first giveaway and we're going to be doing a giveaway of a kind of a Fender Stratocaster kick guitar that we have an extra of for another project that we're doing with another channel. So if you are interested in supporting what me and Matt do here, I'm kind of keeping the wheels greased financially, uh, as well as being in the drawing for a free guitar. Who's against that? You can join us on Patreon and support us at any level, $3 and up. So if it's just $3 a month, you are in for the raffle, which is going to happen at the end of November, we decided, right? Yeah. At the end of November, we're gonna put it all in a hat. I'm actually looking at one of those little fun spinny things so you can put it all in there. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 always the right tool for the job. Always the right tool for the job. So I'm gonna get one of those and we're actually gonna do a live video and do a drawing. Somebody's gonna get a Strat style guitar with up, we're gonna we're gonna talk to our patrons and have you guys help us pick pickups for it and colors and kind of the whole thing. It's gonna be as close to a Driftwood Stratocaster as we can humanly make it and we're gonna mail it straight to you, no questions asked. So if you like what we do here and support it, uh, we do appreciate you guys going to Patreon with a link below and supporting us there. Okay, so we got all the braces done. I have now tapered them all to two millimeters on the outside. We've got them all beautifully done up. Let me turn the vacuum clamp off here. And you can see, she looked good. She looked good. <laughs> um, looks real nice, nice and clean. Uh, we didn't have any issues with tearing up any of the back strap, but uh, pretty self-explanatory there, right? Uh, I don't really, I'm not really looking for a whole lot here. Uh, see if we can get you guys to hear this. There's me kind of holding it in upper area. And if I free, hold it by a, a, a brace. Very nice sound. Um, so I'm happy with that. Um, it's funny, when I was doing these years ago, I used to do, uh, uh, what would I do? I would take all my bodies at the point where it's at now, where the top is glued to the rim, and I would go in a studio and I would record with nice microphones, and I would uh, just capture that tap tone. And I would do the same thing with my backs and capture that tap tone. And it was kind of one of my earlier steps that I would do, and I was really trying to hone in on what made my good guitars sound good and my bad guitars not sound as good. Um, so that was just another method that I would do as well as all, all of these things here that I've talked about I have all these noted in my 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 build journal So if you guys are just getting going keep track of all this stuff I'm doing it kind of all willy-nilly here 
and it looks like I'm not putting a lot of thought into it, but remember, I put a lot of thought into all of this a long time ago, <laughs> and now I'm just copying and repeating what I do, that what works. So don't don't be mistaken that this looks like I'm just kind of not putting any thought into this. It's just uh, it's just the experience that's making it look that way. Um, so that is pretty much it on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was nice and easy. So in the next episode, what we're going to do is we are going to get this guitar back matched up to the sides and we're going to glue it down but you saw that was pretty straightforward nice and simple and you guys can do it at home i do recommend that you get online and and experiment with maybe some different bracing patterns on your back i used to do x braces and all kinds of different things but this is just what we're doing here and we will see y'all in the next one